Do you guys believe, right, that when a white woman or white family is raising a black child, uh, they decide, uh, right, uh, they, uh, de- uh, they decide to protect, <laughs> whereas though black people, when they're raising a black, they, they're raising their black children, they decide to more or less prepare their children. Do you, you get it? You saw something. I, I was did. Talking about this. I did. And basically <laughs> when I saw this topic, it was a African American guy and he was basically saying that he felt like with white women they protect their kids, meaning like they protect the black kids. They protect their black kids because they're wealthy. You know what I mean? So they try to make them think that certain things don't exist. Like racism doesn't exist. They can still do other, you know, certain things. You I don't know. like that though. I agree. My mom's white. Okay, yeah, right. Well, you're you definitely going to. Well, we, we figured you were mixed, but <laughs> we you're definitely going to answer. So, my question is when raising black children, do you guys feel like Whoa, white there. people it's the protect them for me. and black people prepare them? <laughs> do you guys feel that way? That's my question. Oh, man. Say, say, say the question. All sure. Time. When raising black children, do white people protect them while black people prepare <clears throat> them? The white I'm people. I don't you think for the answer. that it's a question. one doesn't exist without the other. Parenting is like a it's a full spectrum situation. So how how do I how do I how am I preparing you and not protecting you? Right. You know, um, you gotta, I one, think one go, the, gotta go with the other. Right in the context, because I whatever you saw, I saw. Uh huh. And I I went to the comments like I really. Cause I was like, you know, I'm a parent. Like, I, this this is meaningful to me. Right. But I don't think that one exists we, without the other. And but in the in the way that it was explained, it makes sense. But at the end of the day, in real life parenting, it doesn't quite work like that. And there are always going to be um, instances where it'll 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 parallel it'll parallel it'll it'll intersect. You know and. The bottom line is that white people have a different, their, the parent, you know, white parents, the background is going to come into the parenting experience differently. Right. right. So it's going to come out differently. And so we're going to call that, um, what is it, protecting instead yes. of preparing, whatever you want to say. But it's, it, it is what it is. And I, I just want to further say that. <sighs> Even in conversations like this, I think it is incredibly divisive Mm -hmm. because it's an it's an unnecessary conversation. At the end of the day, we're raising we're raising children, we're raising black children and we're raising black children to go into the world to be the people that are going to they're they're the ones that are going to we're going to be living in. We're going to be old. So they're getting the world together for us. And so does it matter? Does it matter that they're being protected prepared whatever you know make it good for when i'm old and i'm okay that that's what matters you know it's just these divisive conversations about who does what and no it doesn't matter we're, we're raising them and we're doing a good job are you doing a good job are they loved are they well fed are they clean are they learning you know are are they are, are they able to go out into the world and function like a normal person or you know whatever doesn't matter prepare protect whatever but yes i saw what you saw i Mm. feel like for me i feel a little bit different so i went to cardinal doherty and then i went to alvernia university which Mm. both schools at the time cardinal doherty was a very mixed you know diverse school whereas though um when i went to alvernia university it was predominantly caucasian so i felt like with some of the adopted black kids that i met they were very different than me and they lived in a bubble um, you know, they were well off, they were wealthy, you know what I mean? So they didn't really like understand certain things. And I remember being a sophomore, you know, getting into a physical altercation with another girl who was on the basketball team because she called me a nigga. And they couldn't understand what was the big deal about she it. She was white? She was white. What was it? Did you beat her up? I didn't beat her up. Was I slept it, was the dog it shit nigga? Out of okay. Was she it called nigga me a nigga. Or a nigger? She called me a nigger. Like, can't you lend a nigga? Like, nigger, you know? No, and, like, um, 
I oh, slept like the shit me, out of like her. Django, nigga. Yeah. Like yeah. I and I slept the shit out of her. And I remember wow. having to like, you know, distance myself from the Just a slap for, for the adopted children who were raised by these white people because I felt like they were living in a bubble. You got parents telling them like, oh, racism doesn't exist and everyone loves the world and that wasn't really what it was. So for me, I feel like to a certain extent, white wealthy families, do they protect their kids? Absolutely. But I just think that they need to be realistic with them and let them know, hey, you're going to go through the same racism but are you talking about, other person. Are you talking about black, white, yeah, white I was people? Confused. Are you talking about white people with like black, black kids? Who have adopted black kids. Ad- ad- thought, adopted? Yes. Okay. So These you're not talking top. about white people raising their children specifically. It's, it's black, uh, okay. white people with black children. I mean, right. either scenario you want to look at, but for me, well, the scenario I'm talking about, like it when could I was be, in college. I, 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 okay. I think it would be different if it's a white family that adopted a black kid okay. differently than a white, a white, a white person that had a black baby. They had a baby. biracial child. Right, 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 so, right. Because the dad is black. But when I went to college, it was both ways, and neither one of them couldn't understand why it was such a big deal that mm. this white girl had called me a nigger. Mm. And in their eyes, it wasn't that big deal because we listen to music and we call each other niggas. And they just couldn't understand it. You know what I'm saying? And I remember feeling like, hmm. Whereas though my mom, when she prepared me to go to this white school, she already told me, there's a lot of things that you can't do. Okay, this is one of them. You need to walk a straight line. You need to do what you need to do. Because as soon as you do something, you know, off the rocker, they're going to take your scholarship from you. Those were the kind of conversations I had Why with Why did you mom. go to that school though? Because that was the school that gave me the most money. Oh, uh, mm. fuck that. And I had to go to where I needed to go. What, what gave you the what gave mm. you the most money underneath that? That's what I can't even remember. Well, what me you going to Cardinal Doherty? I went to Cardinal Doherty and I went to Alverna University, but IUP wasn't an option for me. They accepted me, but my mom What's said IUP? I couldn't go. What was that? That's like on, a black school. On a, it is. I didn't know that was a black school. I got a black school. So why it's you ain't go why you ain't go why you go to the black school? I'm my mom wasn't for it. My mom wasn't for it. It's far. My mom wasn't for it. It's Indiana University. <coughs> my mom wasn't right? for it. Well, is that a college? Or it is. Yeah, IUP. Mm-hmm. IUP. Hold on, Carmel Dockney ain't no fucking college. No, no. no I'm talking about the from high school. Is I went to college. Alvernia. Alvernia oh, University. oh, okay, okay. So basically, that's how I felt, and I felt like it's just it, it was just different for me. You know, what I'm saying it was different, and I feel like certain households, you know, you have some that are going to protect, and you have some that are going to prepare, and that's just how. I, I, I but I, don't, I, I just don't. You, I, I, I can't see you doing one without the other. Like I, you have to, I feel like when you preparing them, you it when, is the protection. When mm-hmm. you prepare them, you are protecting them because you're preparing them for for the things that that can possibly happen. So if I don't prepare you, then I'm not I'm not protecting you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If I like if I don't if I don't talk to my kid, if I don't talk to my daughter about guys and yeah, guys will try to sweet talk you X Y and Z blah blah blah. If I don't prepare her for that. I can't. I, I'm not protecting her for when when that happens because a guy can go and sweet talk her, and I never told her about that. She don't know what to look for. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like you you, you have when I when you are preparing somebody, mm-hmm. you are protecting 